Hello and welcome to another segment of Fundy Tidings. I'm your host Jay Reamer and today we're going to be talking about the Link to Life campaign for suicide awareness. February is Suicide Awareness Month as it has been for some time and it's very important I think for us as a community to become more aware of of suicide and how we can become part of the solution to the problem as opposed to um, being at sort of sixes and sevens and wondering how we can help. So today I have with me Roz Allen. Roz, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Jay. You're very welcome. I always like having you on. Even though it's not <coughs> always the most uplifting topic, it's very, very important. Um, and I think as we move through these uh, shows from year to year, people can become more comfortable uh, in, in, in handling it because I don't think anyone uh, is really immune to, to being exposed to either someone who has either threatened to take their life, has done so, or has been a member of a friend's mm -hmm. family. Mm -hmm. So why don't we start today with um, a little bit of the history of, of, of how we got to where we are today, and then we'll carry on. Okay, great, Jay. Um, as you said, uh, I'm here to talk about um, our Link to Life campaign. Um, actually that's going to happen at the end of February, but the history goes back to uh, 1999, Gr Grand Falls. Uh, the community was devastated when two teens took their life with suicide. Um, the community was, as I said, devastated. They thought, what are we going to do? Um, they decided that they wanted to put a resource together for teens to say, okay, if you're in a bit of, a, of trouble, where are you going to turn? So they put together a, a teen link card uh, with resources, including the kids' help phone line. Um, it proved to be so successful that word spread and other communities adopted the program. Um, this is the link program. And then the Department of Health decided that this was such a good program that they handed it over to all the 13 suicide prevention committees in the province and said, you take care of it for each of your communities. You create your own information card that suits your community and uh, print the cards, distribute it, um, get it out to the schools, have the counselors and everyone aware of it. So this has been something that our um, Suicide Prevention Committee has looked after for since the early, early 2000. That's been great, but a few years after we started, we decided that that's super for teens, but we need something for adults. So we decided that we would make a adult link card, which was a tri-fold uh, uh, extended uh, version of this. And actually Charlotte County is the only community other than one community in the north that has an adult community card. So that's the history of the teen link program. We, last year, as, as we know, um, Charlotte County was, was hit by by many tragedies and deaths, and um, we felt compelled that we had to do something. So um, we got together in September, and we put together what we called the Link to Life campaign for the end of November. So this year, we've moved it to Suicide Prevention Month in February, and it's happening the last week of February. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that it's really a very important um, topic because it, there's a, sig a stigma around mm -hmm. Um, suicide and it's <clears throat> it's a topic that that we need to try to dissolve that stigma a bit and with this show and a lot of the shows that we do on Fundy Tidings the 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 goal is to raise people's awareness mm -hmm. of the <clears throat> of the problem and to build a bridge so that people in the community can become part of the solution and you cannot become part of the solution if you're not more informed. Yeah. So what we want to try to do today <clears throat> really is to inform people a little bit about some of the signs and, and how we actually get off the mark. What can we as individuals in the community do and what are the signs that we might want to look for because I think oftentimes with with um, issues that surround mental health, mm -hmm. um, we f we defer uh, to professionals, and we feel that we're not qualified. We don't have degrees. We mm -hmm. don't, you know, <clears throat> we're not the best solution. When in fact, 
I maintain that we can be a very helpful mm -hmm. part of the solution because as I see it, as I see with many things, is that it's a bit of a spectrum. So you have people at one end of the spectrum who are what you might call low risk, and mm -hmm. then you have people at the other end of the spectrum who are high, high risk to very high risk. And we as community members, family members, brothers, sisters, spouses, mm -hmm. and so forth, can be very, very um, effective in the beginning stages. Yeah. And oftentimes yeah. we don't pay attention to those. So how would you um, go about kind of um, summarizing the, the points mm -hmm. of, of how we might, where would we begin? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Super. I really appreciate what you've just introduced, the whole subject, Jay, of just talking about, yes, there's the formal resources, but it's, it's, it's the informal, it's, it's you and I, it's our neighbors, it's our, our relatives that can really um, be the link to help out. Um, and as you said, a summary of points, you can, you can use the acronym TALK, T-A-L-K, and I'll just, we'll just kind of briefly go through that. Sure. And T mm. can stand for, what we're doing right now is talking about it, instead of that stigma that keeps us quiet and we don't want to talk about the word, we don't want to say the word suicide, let's get it out in the open. Um, actually, I've, I've talked with um, a couple of people who've recently lost um, family members through suicide and they're adamant that they want to talk about it mm. because they say, we don't want anyone to go through the pain that we've gone through. Mm. So, talking about it. Um, Talk, so yes. let's just <clears throat> carry that for a, a, a little bit because I, th I it's what I've noticed because I've um, I was watching uh, actually recently a television show that Anderson Cooper um, was uh, was hosting and it was with a, a senator in in the U.S. who lost his son uh, to suicide and it was a big deal and it and the thing that, that, that what I liked most about it was is because Anderson could relate personally to this kind of tragedy mm -hmm. he was less shy about asking really pointed questions and they weren't they weren't interrogating kind of questions they were just honest uh, opportunities he gave the he gave the senator an opportunity to share his experience with him and I think that that that's so important because it is um, a very isolating mm -hmm. experience to go through. Uh, whether you're a family member or even a distant thing, it, it, it suddenly it, you can feel very alone because you don't know how to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And I think talking is so important that I noticed in the interview that Anderson was doing just how he brought the senator out and how mm -hmm. it was a relief so I think that he's not alone. We were, we're all human beings, and mm -hmm. we, re we mm -hmm. relate to these things in very similar ways often. Mm -hmm. And so I think that talking is such a critical mm -hmm. thing because it, it, it's, a, it's a way of connecting, mm -hmm. which is critical, yes. and it's a way of feeling, therefore, less isolated. Yes, Yeah. absolutely. And we'll get into that a little bit in, the, in another um, segment there. Um, so T is for talking about it, as we are doing now. Um, T also, also can stand for tell, um, that once we are given um, some ideas of some warning signs, um, that person will be telling me that something's going on. Mm. And also, then I can tell them, Jay, you know, I have noticed these things. So that's the T. What's so, an example of something that somebody would actually tell you that would be a warning sign? Well, and again, it may not be as, it may not be as blatant as I'm thinking about killing no, myself, no, but, <coughs> but, but, but their behavior, be. their behavior. Obviously, you have to have some kind of relationship with a person. You're going to notice that their behavior has changed. Mm. That you know they're not, they're not uh, playing hockey. They're not, you know, they're not turning up for music practice or something like that. Something has, you know, a flag is flying that has uh, giving you okay, what's going on? But their whole demeanor, you mm -hmm. know, um, perhaps they're not sleeping. Perhaps they're not eating. Um, so a change in a their change behavior. A change in behavior. Um, and if, again, in talking to them and knowing them, um, we kind of can generalize and say a change of behavior and also if you know that there's been stressful events in their life. I mean, the two put together is, you know, can make for stress. Mm -hmm. So those are, 
And I have to say, unfortunately, not everyone. You know, it's not a checklist, of course. We're all individuals. And unfortunately, some people can keep it well hidden and may not display, even to close, close members. Yes. But if somebody does actually say, you know, I think I just, I just have had it. I'm done. <clears throat> um, that kind of a remark, it's not, it's not something that I've ever said. And I um, think probably a lot of people don't say. Mm -hmm. When people do say that, um, it's important to take it seriously, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. That's. I'm, I'm glad you said that. That's the thing, because people can say that, and they and people and I could say, oh well, you know, Jay would never. He's just saying that. He's having a bad day. Yeah. But the fact is, let's take that comment seriously and really mm. thought, well, Jay, why would you say that? Mm -hmm. You know, what's going on? So I think that's the thing, because people can say that, throw it out, and they're looking for your response. Yes. Yeah. It's. It, Is you know, there a way of? I mean. The, if they said it, you know, I'm thinking about killing myself, but perhaps they're saying, I've had it, I can't take it anymore, mm -hmm. or people would be better off without me. Mm -hmm. You go, well, what are you saying? Yeah, yeah. They're reaching out for a connection. Yes, and, yeah. but they're not <coughs> conspicuously saying, I'm yeah. thinking of, of right. killing myself. Because they don't know how you're going to react. No. Because I could be the type of person to say, well, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard of. Yeah. And how, how are we going to feel then? Yeah, well, you're going to continue to feel very isolated, and, yes. that's, and, that, yeah. and that's the worst thing that can happen. But um, so what, uh, should we move on to A? Yeah, okay. and I think we've got there, yes. All right. So the T is, is looking for those warning signs, following up, and as you have noticed the warning signs, then say, ask that question. So A is for ask. Ask the, the question. You have to say the S word. You have to say, you know, and... In other um, workshops, we can go into a lot more detail about how to go about this <clears throat> and so on. But for this, for this uh, program here, um, we'll, we'll say that, you know, Jay, I've noticed that you haven't been coming to choir practice. I've noticed that, you know, you're not interested in, you know, painting anymore. You know, what's going on? You can lead into it and say, sometimes when people have gone through this and this and this, they may be thinking about ending their life. Right. Are you thinking about this? Yeah. Right. You have to ask. Yeah. And you can't say, are you thinking of hurting yourself? Because there's a difference between hurting and, and killing yourself. So you have to ask. And this is the biggest, I would say this is the biggest misconception that keeps people from um, asking for help or um, extending help. Because people think, oh, if I ask someone, that's going to encourage them. But the opposite is true. They are so relieved that Obviously, you care enough, I care enough, uh, that I'm obviously not going to judge you, that you can trust me. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that that's, um, you know, that's a big s a hurdle for a lot of people yeah. because it's, it, it's not, it isn't a comfortable topic. Yeah, yeah. And it's a challenge, yeah. but it is, it is an observation that we've made. And, and just because someone has, um, has missed, uh, their, have had a behavioral change in their life of one or many different kinds, it doesn't mean that they're, that they're necessarily aimed in the direction of, yes. of ending their life. However, it can indicate a, um, a, some kind of mental health issue. I mean, there could be some other stuff going on there that needs to be brought up. And, mm -hmm. and so that um, asking that question gives them a lifeline, so to speak, yeah. to connecting, to yes. be able to share um, what's on their mind. And again, what you mentioned, again, is there's the stigma. I mean, there's the stigma around suicide. There's the stigma around mental illness, mm. mental health. Mm. You know, I think it's, what do we think that we're all <laughs> perfect all the time and everything is going to be, you know, fair sailing? Uh, because it isn't. And I think people are hesitant to admit to you know, whether your relative or your friend or whatever that, you know, perhaps I'm depressed or perhaps I'm, you know, I've got anxiety, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, let's, let's be honest here and, yeah. and say no, you know. Uh, and then you, once, once you open that dialogue, then that, that it, it, it gives you some choices of, of actions that you can take. For instance, well, let's go down and, and uh, t talk to yeah. a counselor yeah. or let's go talk to our priest or let's go talk to granny or whatever yes. it might be. Because there are lots and lots of people who can be very helpful, who we have respect yeah. for. I, I remember um, reading uh, a story not too long ago 
about um, a young fellow who um, was really depressed and, and was ready to end his life. And he just uh, coincidentally was walking along and, and, and um, uh, there was an old man sitting on a bench and he struck up a conversation with this guy and uh, that conversation was all it took to, to change his, his whole perspective on life. And I remember the story because it was at this, when this old man died, this mm -hmm. kid went to the funeral and read this as part of the, the um, eulogy. eulogy. Mm -hmm. And it was very moving. I mean, it was really, it was, it, so you don't have to be a healthcare professional exactly. to make a huge impact on exactly. someone. But starting the dialogue is yes. the first place to begin. Yeah. And that connection, as you said, yeah. and and so you're leading right into. So we've asked the question, mm. um, and if they say they may deny it, I think you'd follow your gut reaction mm. to say, okay, something's going on. If they deny it, you can ask again, but keep an eye on them. Mm -hmm. Or if they say, well, you know what? Yeah, I I, mm. I, I have. So then the next the L mm. in talk is to listen, right? And and uh, in your that story that you told, I mean, that was pretty providential. Uh, apparently, you know, he just met someone, and that whatever that comment was just turned him around. And that's the the um, amazing thing that can happen when someone is allowed to um, make a connection, but also to talk. And so our job is not to solve their problems; it's just to to listen. Mm. And uh, and of course, the listening without that judgment or saying. Gee, you think you got problems? You know, listen to what I've got going on. You know, right? So, yeah. So let that person uh, talk. And actually, the amazing thing that can happen, the wonderful thing that can happen, is that in that process of, a ta of talking, they can actually, in hearing themselves talk, in having someone listening, they can actually, you know, sort things out, and that can be the turning point. Well, you know, listening is an interesting uh, is an interesting. Uh, act in and of itself. And I've talked about listening on this show a number mm -hmm. of times because we tend to either <coughs> listen with the intention of responding or the intention of understanding. And I've always said that mm. it's really important to listen with the intention to understand first. I find, even myself, that uh, I, I'm a fixer. I like to fix things. Mm -hmm. So, f people. So mm -hmm. if somebody s says something, I feel obliged for some bizarre reason that they're asking me to fix whatever is on their mind, right. and it isn't necessarily so. They just want to be heard, and it's it, and and they're not interested in my relationship to the problem. They're interested mm -hmm. in just being heard, mm -hmm. and if we can listen, and then actually sort of summarize to mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. what they've just said to us so that we can be clear as mm -hmm. to what they've said. That alone can make a huge difference. So listening is an art and it's something mm -hmm. that I that I hope everybody uh, will um, think about. There's a book uh, actually out by a, a guy named Warren Redmond who's a New Brunswicker, uh, mm -hmm. a brilliant New Brunswicker, and it's called Emotional Fitness, Nine Steps to Emotional Fitness. And one of the, one of the um, uh, main components is this ability to listen. And uh, mm. listening is a very integral part to mm. uh, healthy emotional fitness. So anyway, uh, that's for another show. But, but it is critical to in this situation. In this, yeah, because yeah, they're, it's what they're saying is what we need to hear. Yes, yes. Mm. And, and for them to have the opportunity to mm. speak without being judged or interrupted or, or dismissed. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's the L in, as I yes. said, the acronym of TALK. We've got to talk about it, to tell them that you've noticed warning signs. A is to ask the question, and L is the listening. And then once you've listened, uh, and then K is for that connect. Mm. Um, and that's when, hopefully, you may have the link to life card in your wallet, and you could say, well, Jay, you know, okay, I care about you. This is serious, what are we gonna do? You know, I'm not a professional, but I, I really want you to talk to someone. Uh, who would you like to connect with? Mm. You know, so and unless you have some specific people in mind, then you know we could follow up with with other resources. Mm. But I'm the informal resource that's made the connection, 
that's hopefully made the difference to you, and then we could connect them to more formal resources. Right. Yeah. Well, now I always find with uh, you know when we're dealing with uh, difficult subjects that <clears throat> people want to really be led by the hand for that first step. Right. And so the first step, from what I'm understanding from what you're saying, really would be to connect with someone else. Yes. For instance, mm -hmm. you, for example, and your telephone number with Canadian Mental Health is, is going to be on the screen, so mm -hmm. people can jot that number down, mm -hmm. and if they ever need it, yeah. they, can, they can call that, and that would be step one. Yes. And even if they were even if they were thinking that someone might be in, in at risk, they could call you and mm -hmm. say, "What? How should? I, what should I do?" Because because mm -hmm. th then you can, you can. That's that's where they can. That's yes. where they can actually begin to yes. become part of the yes. solution, yeah. and that's what we want. Mm -hmm. um, because it's so difficult to to the, the Make first, that first step, step is yes. always the hardest, yeah. isn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, absolutely, and uh, and it's it's all linking, making those links, and the link to life, and uh, and as I said, the link to life card is our trifold wallet size card uh, with, re with 50 phone numbers here for Charlotte County and some websites. So um, for our Link to Life um, campaign in February, what we want is um, the last week of February, we'll be putting up um, green ribbons at certain places around St. Stephen, St. Andrews and St. George. But in February, we want people when they see this lovely lime green ribbon, uh, they'll think of the link card and they'll think, okay, it's okay to ask for help. There is help uh, and just try and connect with someone mm. else. So Now, yeah. I know that you have some initiatives uh, that you're going to be uh, actually, uh, you know, getting underway uh, yes. to, to try and, and, and make the connections with people who are... Um, either at risk or know people who are at right. risk to, who want to become more informed. Yes. So do you want to talk about those? Yeah. No, I have, and I'll be putting up some posters. Again, we'll have the poster with our green ribbon, and, um, and we okay. have our, yeah, super, yeah. listing our information sessions. Um, also, you'll notice that I've given Jay a, um, a, a button. Uh, thank you for wearing it, Jay, our Link to Life. So our information sessions are the last week of February, mm -hmm. Monday in St. Stephen, Wednesday here at the college in St. Andrews, and Thursday in St. George, and I have the locations. And the, So so those are information se sessions, and those are about an hour long? Just one hour at lunchtime. Right. And as we mentioned, the T-A-L-K, right. it's almost... Uh, I'll be, co I'll be expanding on those points, but it's a real condensed version of uh, suicide information, trying to um, clarify uh, some information or get rid of some misconceptions. Mm -hmm. And then, the, the, so if people are interested in pers uh, pursuing this a bit further, then you have a little bit longer of a... Right. Of uh, people can contact me if they want. Uh, we have what's called Safe Talk, which is a three and a half hour um, expanded uh, awareness uh, session. It's free to the public. And then also in we have the ASSIST, which is uh, Applied Suicide Intervention Training Skills. It's a two-day intensive workshop. We'll be having that in the end of April. And uh, so that, that, that does cost, though, unfortunately. We have to charge for that. Will you... Um Post those on. Uh, you'll you'll post those on on our. Uh, Your on bulletin. Our, yeah, yeah, on the bulletin board, so yeah. that people can get that yes. information. Yes. Yes. So if you if you are interested in getting the information, there'll be more in depth information on the bulletin board um, uh, when we're when the community bulletin board is being uh, broadcast. Yes. Yeah. And and also um, we have our monthly meeting, our suicide prevention meeting. We meet monthly. Uh, if anyone again is interested in this cause, to uh, contact me and we certainly welcome new members, or if you just want to drop in and see what we're doing. But the Suicide Prevention Committee is, you know, does a number of, of activities through the year, um, tr just trying to get the message out. Mm. Roz, this has been uh, really very informative, and uh, I, I hope that uh, our viewers really um, can feel more comfortable uh, in reaching out to, to people um, because it is, it's such a critically important component. And I know that 
when tragedy strikes, um, we all have this terrible feeling mm -hmm. of emptiness mm -hmm. and what can we do or yeah. what could we have done. Exactly. And I think that <coughs> by uh, having this campaign and um, bringing awareness to the mm -hmm. community that people can really um, become part of the solution. So thank you really a lot for, thank you, for coming in today and thank you for joining us for another segment of Fundy Tidings and I look forward to seeing you again in the future.